Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT session on Basic Operating System Security Settings, Part 1. Today we're going to be talking about users and groups, and then we will discuss NTFS versus share permissions. And with that, let's go ahead and begin this session. We begin by talking about users and groups. Now, Microsoft uses users in group settings as the primary form of authentication and authorization. The user is authorized to perform tasks and functions based on the permissions that are granted through the users in group settings. Individual users can be granted permissions, but it is much more common to place users into groups and then grant the group permission. It's a whole lot easier to manage that way than to manage each individual user. So now let's talk about some of those groups. And we're going to begin with the administrator group. Administrator accounts have complete control over the local machine. The administrator has all rights and permissions on a PC. It's not recommended that this account be used for daily activity. Some groups could be called power user groups. They have near administrator like powers. The power user can add devices and some drivers and change system settings. About the only thing that a power user can't do is install applications. Now let's talk about the standard user. This is your day to day account. This user can run most applications and can modify some system settings, but that's about it. The most restricted account is the guest account, and it should only be created on a temporary basis. The user can run just very basic applications, which do include a web browser. This account should be disabled after it is used. Now let's move on to NTFS and share permissions. NTFS permissions are only available on NTFS drives. Imagine that. Permissions can be based on user or group accounts or both. Now the permissions are either to allow an action or to deny it. And a deny will override and allow every time. Now those permissions are read. The file can be viewed but not modified. Write. The file can be viewed and changes may be saved to the file but it can't be deleted. Read and execute. Programs require this permission to run. There's modify. The file can be read, it can be written to, and it can be deleted. And then there's full control. The user can take ownership of the file or program. Now share permissions are a little bit different. Share permissions involve network shares. There are three basic permissions on network shares. There's read. That's the default that every share receives, otherwise you wouldn't have shared it. Change. The user can read and modify the file. And then there's full control, which is the same as in NTFS. NTFS and share permissions do combine. They're cumulative in nature. What happens is the least restrictive permission from NTFS is compared to the least restrictive permission from the share. These two are then looked at and evaluated, and the most restrictive of the two is the active permission. Now let's talk about what happens to permissions when you move a file or when you copy it. Now, when you move a file, you're just changing the location of a file or folder on the local volume and that has no effect on the permissions associated with that file. When you copy a file or a folder, you're actually changing its location to a new volume. Now when that happens, the permissions are now tied to the target system, the new volume. So whatever permissions are in effect on that volume get applied to the files and folders. Now we need to discuss file and folder attributes. Uh, these are very low level and basic characteristics of the file or folder. They kind of work with permissions, but are also separate from them. 
final attributes always take precedence over permissions, whether they are NTFS or share. And final attributes apply to all users. An example of a file attribute is read only. The operating system will prevent anyone from making changes to the file or folder. The attribute would need to be changed before modifications were possible to that file or folder. Now that concludes this session on basic operating system security settings. We covered users and groups, and then we looked at NTFS and share permissions. Now, on behalf of Pace IT, thank you for viewing this session, and I'm sure we will do some more.